All right, welcome back. Welcome back, price and quantity effect. All right, so why do elasticity and inelasticity matter? So why are we even bothering to learn this in the first place? Well, one of the big reasons is because producers might actually be able to increase their revenue by changing their price. So a higher price or a low price could actually increase their total revenue depending on whether demand is elastic or inelastic. So that's gonna be what this video is really gonna get into. All right, so that's pretty much what I just said. Depending on whether demand is unit elastic, inelastic, or elastic predicts how changes in the price of a good will affect total revenue earned by producers of that good. So if the price were to go from P2 to P1, so an increase in the price, we know that according to the law of demand, we're gonna decrease our quantity demanded. So we're gonna go from Q2 to Q1, but depending on whether demand is elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic will affect what exactly happens to the total revenue in that situation. So um, we'll define total revenue. Total revenue is equal to P times Q. That's price times quantity. So in this case, you see the model here for you. The price is $5. 10 units are sold, so total revenue if $5 is our price, very simple, we do five times 10 equals $50. So that would be the total revenue, price times quantity. So again, everything we're doing in this video is kind of trying to see, well, what happens to our total revenue if the price were to go up to $6, or let's say the price were to fall to $4. How much of a change are we gonna have in the quantity demanded? Is it actually enough to possibly even increase total revenue. All right, so we have two things that are happening here simultaneously. We have a price effect and we have a quantity effect, and we'll do the quantity effect in the next video, or sorry, the next slide. So the price effect, if you look at our model here and assume that we have moved from point B to point A. Now, again, that's the price has gone up from P2 to P1 and our quantity has decreased from Q2 to Q1. With price effect, we only care about what happened to the price. So the idea here is because the price went up from P2 to P1, each unit that is sold is now selling at a higher price. So the price effect suggests that a higher price should increase revenue. All right, price effect suggests that a higher price should increase revenue, and conversely, it suggests that a lower price should decrease revenue. That's the price effect. The quantity effect, on the other hand, focuses on what happens to the quantity demanded. This one is going to suggest uh, the opposite, because when we move from point B to point A, we now demand fewer, uh, smaller quantity. So we go from Q2 to Q1. Um, so our quantity has decreased. So that big pink box there, pink rectangle, those are all the goods uh, and the revenue that was there before at point B, but has been lost. So that pink rectangle represents the decrease in total revenue. The bluish purple periwinkle color, the price effect, that represents the increase in total revenue. So again, we have price and quantity effect working in opposite directions. So this just summarizes that after a price increase, the price effect says that each unit sold sells at a higher price, which would raise revenue. The quantity effect says that when the price increases, fewer units are sold, which lowers revenue. So what's gonna tell us which one of those two effects wins out? And the answer is the price elasticity of demand. So that's gonna determine which effect is stronger. Is the quantity effect or the price effect going to be the dominant one? So let's look at three specific examples of this now. Okay, so our first one is gonna be unit elastic. Um, if you recall with unit elastic, um, that means that the change in quantity demanded over the change in price is equal to one. So um, quantity effect and price effect in this instance are exactly equal. Um, so let's look at this going from point E to point F or F to E, it doesn't really matter which one we do. Um, let's start at point E, price is $3. The quantity demanded is 10, so what is our total revenue? $3 times 10 equals 30. Now, we're gonna lower our price, so we have a downward movement along the demand curve to point F, price all the way down to $1, and our quantity demanded now has increased to 30. So $1 times 30 equals $30. In either case, our total revenue is exactly the same. So, with unit elastic demand, neither 
the quantity effect nor the price effect dominates the other. They are exactly equal. So there is no change in total revenue, regardless of whether you're increasing the price or decreasing the price. Inelastic demand. All right, so remember, when we're talking about inelastic demand, we have that steeper demand curve, as you can see over here to the right. And the idea here is that when the price changes, yes, our quantity demanded will change, but not by very much. These are goods that typically we aren't very responsive to a change in the price. Things like gas. Um, if gas prices increase, we still need gas. We might get a little less gas because maybe we won't take that road trip. Um, if gas is really cheap, maybe we will drive a little bit more, we'll leave the car on or something like that. But typically speaking, gas, the demand for gas is relatively inelastic. So um, that's a good example to think of when we picture this. So we have a price here at point A, the price is $10. Um, the quantity demanded is 30. So our total revenue, price times quantity, $10 times 30 equals $300. Now we have a downward movement to $5. And we see that our quantity demanded has indeed increased, but not by very much. It's only gone from 30 to 40. So we have $5 times 40 equals $200. So they've cut their price in half and they have actually decreased their total revenue because demand is inelastic. So in this case, having a higher price when you have inelastic demand actually increases total revenue because the price effect is the stronger of the two effects. So if we were to go from B to A, increase the price from $5 to $10, in that case, we would actually be going from revenue of $200 to $300. So with inelastic demand, producers have an opportunity to increase the price and it will actually lead to an increase in revenue because people will mostly keep buying their product. And if they cut the price, people aren't going to buy a whole lot more, so they do better off with a higher price. Elastic is the opposite. We have that more shallow, less steep demand curve. This is where people are highly responsive to changes in the price. So we're going to start at $5 again. Price being $5. Well, actually, let's start at 4 because we do have up arrows and down arrows. So let's do that. Uh, so we're going to start at $4, and at $4, our quantity demanded is 50, so $4 times 50 equals $200. Then we're going to increase the price, but what we notice is when we increase the price from $4 to $5, it has a very large effect on our quantity demanded. This is the quantity effect taking place. We go from 50 to down to 20 units demanded, so now we're at total revenue is $5 times 20, which equals $100. So our revenue has been cut in half as a result of a relatively small 25% price increase. So people were very responsive to the change in the price. So as a result, when demand is elastic, we have um, a lower price is what is needed to increase total revenue. Higher prices reduce total revenue because that quantity effect is the stronger of the two. Last thing to note is that elasticity generally changes along the demand curve. So I know I've given you examples of what they look like more steep or shallow, but in reality, as you move along the demand curve, we go from the top portion where demand is typically elastic, and you could do the math to prove this to yourself, and maybe we will in class. Um, then you hit a center point where it becomes exactly unit elastic. So at that point, you could increase the price or decrease the price and it's not going to change total revenue in that small little region right there, in this case at $5. And then demand becomes inelastic towards the bottom. And the reason for that again is that we are calculating percent changes. So going from $10 to $9, that's only a 10% decrease in price. Um, but going from essentially like 0.1 as a quantity demanded up to 1, that's a massive increase in the quantity demanded. So that's going to be, demand will be elastic in that range, inelastic at the bottom range. This has been a Lamoney production.